Um, thank you everyone uh, for, for attending uh, this session today. Um, our, as I said, our guest speaker is uh, Sally Palafour, the founder and managing partner of Inspired Partners. And the topic that we're going to be discussing, um, which we thought was good timing with everything going on, um, and hopefully some, some green shoots at the end of a tough year, is change is inevitable, growth is optional. Okay? Um, so we'll get on to that in a bit, but it's exciting for me uh, as uh, the person that oversees the Bishop Vesey's uh, Corporate Partnerships Programme to collaborate with both um, Inspired Partners today and uh, the Sutton Coalfield Chamber of Commerce. So we've got a mixture of obviously the Inspired Partners team here, um, some Sutton Chamber uh, members and some Bishop Vesey corporate partner members. And there are, is some crossover in that, you know, myself and Chris work pretty closely together. I know Clive's a member of both organisations. I know Paul um, isn't a member of the partnership yet, but I'm, I'm still working on it. Uh, but he's, a, he's an old Vizian and a, and, a, and a corporate partner. And I know uh, Chris is working on Chris to join the partner, the, the, the chamber as well. So uh, there's, there's some crossover already, and I'm sure there's scope for some more collaboration between some of us in the future. Um, in terms of what we do at Bishop Vizian's Grammar School, um, so... Our Corporate Partnerships programme has been running since January 2017. Um, it was um, actually founded out of um, the inaugural golf day that we held in June 2016, where Clive, good timing that Clive's actually on the call, uh, so he can back me up on this, but Clive uh, sponsored our event um, and got a order for X2 furniture from one of our parents for a sizable amount. I won't, I won't say how much, but it was worth Clive's while and significantly more than it cost him to sponsor the event. Um, and we got, you know, uh, talking internally about if we can professionalise that and make it a little bit more... Uh, you know, like we're putting uh, people together and, and, and making these introductions, surely there's a win for everybody. Um, so that's really how it sort of uh, started. Um, we've currently got 29 corporate partners. We've had uh, a good amount of growth over the last few months with inspired partners coming on. Um, 3D facilities, uh, both Sutton Chamber members. Uh, but then we've also attracted uh, in the last few weeks Quilter Cheviot and Erwin Mitchell. So, you know, we're getting quite sizable businesses um, engaging with us. Uh, and, and the, you know, the two big areas for me, which, you know, I think are exciting um, for those of you that aren't partners and for those of you that are, are we get an evolution of uh, new families coming uh, to be involved with VZ on a yearly basis. So, you know, 192 new families generally join at uh, year seven and about probably another 75 to 100 at lower six. Um, you know, we've done a lot of hard work building the network. So, you know, LinkedIn groups of about 4,000, Twitter followers of similar numbers, um, you know, and the reach and the um, appeal, of, I guess, uh, that we have is good. So, you know, our network might not be as big as um, other organisations, but it's very, very centralised. You know, I know there's quite a lot of you on this call today who have some link with the school, either as parents or as, you know, alumni yourself. So, you know, I think that will happen in most groups that you, you're at, whether you do BNI, whether you're doing the Chamber, whether you're doing um, some of the others, you know, you'll find someone with a link to Bishop Vesey's Grammar School. So. Anyway, uh, anyone that isn't a member that's interested, uh, feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn or drop me an email. I'll put my uh, details in the chat area shortly. Uh, but enough talking about me. Today's really about uh, giving our new corporate partner, uh, Inspired Partners, the platform after 
uh, I uh, ask Chris to just say a few words from uh, the chamber perspective. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And absolutely, you know, uh, as uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the sort of the benefits from the, the VZ partnership for for the chamber and for our members and for, for businesses are there to see and it's great to uh, great to be working with everyone everyone today um yes yeah, so obviously i head up the chamber so we obviously are here to sort of represent businesses in sutton coalfield brian's on our executive committee i know clive was previously on our executive committee in litchfield and tamworth we cover uh various areas sutton litchfield tamworth birmingham solihull burton and cannock um and really the key thing is to, to engage with us through our communication channels, through our, 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 our contacts, through our employees, and, and keep an eye on some of the things that are happening. Lots of things going on. I'll put an information in the chat around it. Um, and, and yeah, and as always, if you've got any questions, I'm here to, to help uh, help with that uh, on the chamber side of things. And um, happy to uh, to help and be helping host uh, host today. And uh, I think again, that's enough from me. I want to pass over to Sally now. Sally's really fascinating. She's done a few events for us before. So great to uh, see it. So over to you, Brian. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. It's good when someone says they're going to talk for a minute and they actually do as well. So. <laughs> um, right. So um, without further ado, our guest speaker for today is uh, Sally pa Palafort from Inspired Partners. They are a Sutton Coalfield based change management and leadership development company that's built a strong reputation for supporting businesses with challenging environments helping the businesses to implement solutions that deliver lasting change. Rather than offering off-the-shelf solutions, Sally and the team work closely with clients to understand their unique business needs, delivering solutions that match their culture and provide both short and long-term benefits. They work with companies large and small across a range of sectors and um, there'll be a special offer for everyone attending today at the end that Sally will talk about later, but definitely worth you, you attending today. Um, and Sally started her career as an engineering apprentice and designed and installed manufacturing systems before getting involved in the world of change. She brings a pragmatic approach to the world of change and is focused on delivering the required outcomes whilst also engaging with the people who will ultimately make it stick. Sally's passionate about the work that she does and loves to share with others change insights from 25 years working in the field of change. So, Sally, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. I always wonder how old I become once you add up all the different bits of my career. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to share my screen. I've put some slides together. One second. And then swap. There we go. So, can everyone see that? All right. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much to both Chris and Brian for that introduction. Um, so today's session is around this change is inevitable, growth is optional. So and it is pulling uh, from our experience over the last uh, few years about the things that really help organisations to, um, to, to grow. So we're going to do four objectives. Um, so we're going to think about what the current business challenges are. So I'm going to ask you to um, join in on that bit. Then I'm going to talk about what we mean by pivoting a business. Um, then explore five areas for increased business resilience. So these are five areas that I've seen organisations uh, do well and not so well, but um, to share with you to make certain that you're the things that you're thinking about. And then think about what would make the biggest difference for your business. So I think Brian has probably covered most of this, but I'll give you a whistle stop tour. I've realised I'm wearing the same frock uh, as in my photo. Um, but you'll see that, that that photo was February last year, and I, I no longer have a fringe. So one of the upsides or downsides of the pandemic. So as Brian said, started my career as an engineer. So I was an apprentice fitter for British Aerospace up in Preston, uh, and then designed manufacturing systems and installed manufacturing systems. Uh, then moved into consultancy across various sectors, and uh, one project that I worked on, we were mapping lots of business processes and they asked me to start looking at the sort of people processes. So it's a bit of an unusual entrant in, entrance into the world of change management, which tends to be looking at sort of the people side of things. 
Um, I worked for an organization for a number of years, um, going up through their business uh, consultancy practice, ended up heading up their um, change management practice, and then moved to a division of Talis, who work in the defense sector. So I was their business improvement director for a couple of years and then set up my uh, Inspired Partners. But I've also, for the last seven years, been a guest lecturer at the University of Bath. So talking about change management, um, probably a little bit of theory that we share, but it's, it's mostly about really helping people have some practical uh, tools that they can use. Because I think uh, more people should understand change and then more changes would be successful. Became a corporate partner, as Brian said, in December, and I've been a chamber member for about two years now, I think. So there's a little bit about me, a little bit about Inspired Partners, and then I'll get on to the bit that you're more interested in. So established in 2004, Brian said, it's about this tangible and sustainable change. So for me, it's, you know, it's great to go in and do a bit of work and get paid, but actually if we don't make a difference for our clients, then it's not a, then it, it's not a very satisfying piece of work, which is why a number of our clients we've had um, over the last 17 years and the type of work we do, we might work with someone for a couple of years, then we might do nothing with them for three or four years, and then we'll go back. So it's about working with them when, when the requirement of that, requirements are there. So we do tailor our solutions um, to match requirements and budgets. And it doesn't say that there, but also sometimes to match the um, culture of the organisation. So some organisations would be terrified if you showed them a post-it. Others are much more open in the way that they're prepared to um, venture into some of these activities. We do consulting services, interim support and training. And uh, there's a, a cross section of some of the companies that we work with, that we've worked with and work with at the bottom. So uh, Raytheon, who are in the defense sector, uh, Balfour BT, civil engineering, the post office service sector, I suppose, the MOD, Kingspan, who are manufacturing. Um, so a real range. And I think one of the things that that means we can bring for clients and bring to events like this is we've got that breadth of understanding um, and we can bring different experiences. And I think lots of people in organisations tend to be very sort of focused on their sector. So it's about getting them to think maybe a little bit differently. And there are 10 of us uh, in the team. So it's an associate pool which means that we can pull the, pull the right people to work on the right projects. So it's lovely to see uh, the team here supporting me. And I think we don't quite outnumber you, so that's good. Uh, if you've got any questions, just put them in chat. I've just spotted. Oops, one come up. Yeah, OK. So, the first thing I wanted to do was think about what challenges the business is facing today. So I'd like you to use your chat functions and to put into chat what you think the challenges are that businesses are facing today. I've deliberately not said what challenges is your business facing today because I don't want it to, um, didn't want it to become personal, but it would just be really interesting to see what we think the challenges are that businesses are facing. So just give you a moment to put some information into chat. Yeah, so I think definitely consumer confidence from Sunny because uh, and whether that's um, person to person consumer confidence or whether that's um, consumers working um, business to business. So uh, bringing everyone back into the office safely and indeed whether or not we do bring everyone back into the office. And if we've got that sort of mixture of uh, some people working from home, some people in the office, how does that work? So the finances um, for some organisations are thriving that I talked to and some organisations are just surviving at the moment. So um, uncertainty and that lack of confidence, which goes back to the consumer confidence. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk a bit about this, Mike, this paradigm shift in how businesses now need to work. So for some organisations, that's that's become a really uh, big thing for them. Cash flow in these difficult times. Um, uncertainty, so financial and people, 
the way that we work with our employees and the way that employees work. I think remote working is a definitely a ch challenge. Um, some people love it. I've got some people that don't want to ever go back into the office that I talk to and other people loathe and detest it and can't wait to have human contact. So, um, and then Chris, yes, this outward engagement, you know, how do you do business development? How do you go out and meet new people? How do you find out what's happening in the world if it's all um, virtual? Furlough and after. So, um, yeah, that's a really interesting one, Paul, because I think some people think, oh, they're on furlough, aren't they having a lovely time? But actually, it's very worrying for people um, if, they're, if they've been furloughed, you know, will they have a job to go back to? There are some instances when um, people have been furloughed and others in the organisation feel they're having to pick up the slack. So they're a bit, you know, they're a bit um, not envious. That's not the, resentful of those that have been on furlough. So there's all those sorts of emotions that will have to happen as well. So, um, yeah, that's sort of when we've moved much more to online for consumers and businesses. New technology, I think it's been fascinating because lots of organisations, the defence sector is a great one. You know, we can't work from home. Suddenly they've had to and they have. So um, mental health, um, we're going to talk about a little bit. Remote leadership. Yes, how do we lead when we're not actually in the same team with people? So there's a real, real variety of challenges that, uh, that are facing businesses. And all of those in, in my world, I would say are change challenges. So they're all challenges of how businesses are going to um, reflect and manage those sorts of things. And one of the phrases that's become um, more prevalent, I think, in the last um, few months or the last 12 months is this word pivot. i would not particularly heard it before. It's not really a new word, but I think more and more organizations are doing it. And it's about changing your business model. So it's about creating opportunities to improve either your results, your revenue, or just in some cases surviving in the marketplace. But actually, if you go back in time, Suzuki, um, when they first started, they made weaving machines for the silk industry. So uh, they, didn't make, they didn't make motorbikes. If you now look at them, they still, they still actually do quite a lot of work in um, the material sector, but you would think of them as motorbike manufacturers. So um, Starbucks is another great example of a company that pivoted. When they first set up, they sold coffee beans and coffee makers. Uh, and now they've got, whether you like them or loathe them, they've got an awful lot of coffee shops. So, uh, so that's their core business. So it can mean fundamentally changing your business model, or it can mean um, just changing certain areas of the business model. So it doesn't have to be drastic changes. It can be looking at certain things. So it could be about um, thinking about the different products that you're offering, maybe streamlining that, maybe focusing on different customers, um, changing your IT platform changing our processes or some of the manufacturing processes. And the pandemic um, has introduced some really interesting examples. So in the early days, lots of gin and vodka makers were making hand sanitizer. And the automotive and aerospace companies started um, supporting the manufacture of ventilators and other breathing aids. And they did that partly because it was a great thing to do for society, partly because they had the capacity uh, and partly because they possibly thought it was a new revenue stream for them. So they, they did it for a number of different reasons. Um, we've talked about people working from home, so pivoting how you can um, do that. So there's quite a lot of call centres now when the individuals are working from home. And I know for some of the call centre workers, um, that's quite challenging for them because they're used to being in an environment where if they've had a, a bad phone call with somebody, they could say to one of their colleagues, oh, that was a bit tough. And actually, when you're at home, you might be able to say it to the cat or the dog, but you've sort of got to internalise it. McDonald's, who would have thought? I don't think they did um, delivery before. So who would have thought you would have had McDonald's doing delivery? And then there's all this online um, exercise classes, online crafts. So there's lots of ways that different organisations have pivoted at the moment. And indeed, you may have pivoted your businesses. So the five areas that I wanted to um, sort of flag up in, in this particular session are all about how do we develop business resilience? 
So I'm going to start with being clear on direction. If you've got any questions, either drop them in chat or save them, and I'm happy to happy to take any questions. If you think you wouldn't know we should do this, then that's fine. Um, so if we start with clear on direction, what that means is having a vision and strategy. But not only having a vision and strategy in your head, having a vision and strategy that you can share both with the senior management team, but also with the rest of the organization. And that's that's been even, that's even more important now, because actually, if you are going to pivot your business or change some of the direction, you need to make certain that everybody within the organization is clear on where you're going. So what I've done is for each one of these, is I've pulled a couple of examples of projects that I've worked on just to sort of help land some of these ideas. So one of the companies we work with, they had an executive team um, and actually they each had a very different idea of what the strategic vision was. So we had to do quite a lot of work with them to finalize what the vision was before we then thought about, well, how do we roll that out into the organization? So we put together communications plans to then actually make certain that everybody was clear on what that strategic direction and vision was. Another organisation we worked with, which was a bit smaller, they had a senior leadership team and they all had a similar understanding of what the vision was. But when you went out into their different functions, the way that they'd interpret it in their teams was slightly different. So what that meant is as it went down into the organisation, the vision got more and more diluted and was less um, with less emphasis on all, everyone going in the same direction. So I think making certain that you're clear on your direction, but that you share that with everybody within the organization and you ensure that the senior team are aligned is really important. The second one that we've got on this list is about having a balanced skill set. So if you're changing part of your business, then you need to ensure that you've got the right skills in the team. Otherwise, you won't be successful. And it can include everything from developing leadership capabilities. So if maybe you're promoting people into a leadership position, you know, not assuming that they've got that leadership capability, maybe coaching for people that are struggling to ensure, uh, struggling with where they are at the moment and how they're going to deliver against that. And it can also be about the HR services that Paul and Joy would both know about, about making certain that you've got the right people in the right roles with the right skill of skill set and behaviors. And I mentioned behaviors, typically we hire on a skill set and we fire on behaviors. So it's about thinking about have they got the right behaviors for how we want to be. And that's again, really important now because we've got people working remotely. So we need to be clear about what behaviors we're expecting of people. So the sorts of things you might do in this is um, training engineers. So we did, we've done, in fact, I'm on cohort four now of training engineers in um, a large engineering company who have been promoted into quite senior leadership positions, but actually have never had any leadership training at all. So some of them are good at it naturally, some of them find it quite uncomfortable. So giving them those skill sets and, and supporting them so that they can actually be both great engineers, but also really good leaders. So another example would be uh, we had a senior engineer who was a team leader for one functional area. And what we did, we, we co-located a number of different functions together. We were asking people to lead a group of functions rather than just their specialist area. And he was really uncomfortable with that. So we had to do some coaching with him. We had to do some training with him. He very nearly left the business. Um, but once he'd got over that hurdle, actually he was one of the best team leaders that they had and he really embraced it. But you know, just because people are feeling uncomfortable about things doesn't mean they can't do it, but it might mean that you need within your organization to help them on that journey. And then using the HR function, to make certain that they're um, not just doing the process work, but actually supporting the strategy, the vision, and, and enabling all those different aspects. Oops. Uh, so the next one is ways of working. So when we talk about ways of working, we're thinking about how do we work together? And we've talked a bit about, bit, when we talked about the business challenges, about the need to um, of working remotely. 
So I think the ways of working are really important now. So it's about being clear on your expectations. How do you expect people to work together? So we tend to document our processes and our procedures, but this is about maybe documenting, not in a massive document, but how do we want to work together so that everyone is clear. So if we have got staff coming back from furlough or if you've got some staff working remotely, some staff working in the office, what does that look like? Are we going to try and get everybody back into the office on certain days when it's safe to do so? So thinking about all of those different expectations and also some of the behaviours that we think about and that we're expecting from people. And those ways of working um, can be within your team, um, quite a lot of the work that I do in the defence sector is about the ways of working between suppliers and the customer. So how do the MOD work with their um, suppliers? So to make certain that they're more collaborative. So you can introduce that documented ways of working. You can do that in a fun way. It doesn't have to be really um, tedious but it is about making certain that everyone is really clear. And then it gives people permission. If someone isn't following the ways of working that you want, it gives you permission to say, actually, that's not how we said we were gonna to work together. So we've run workshops. Um, lots of organizations these, day have, these days have values. We've run a number of workshops with um, one organization to say, well, if these are your values, what behaviors do you want to see people um, experiencing and as part of to see those values brought to life so what we've done with that is we ran some workshops we identified the behaviors but then once they were agreed at the executive level we made certain that the individuals within the teams also understood those behaviors and got them thinking about well, what does that mean for me in my job and then um with the corporate stuff we've looked at iso 44001 which is a corporate uh, collaborative working standard. So, and there's lots of different things in there, but it's a great way of um, gathering insights into how the two parties are working and then saying, well, these are the aspects that you need to work to. So, so thinking about your ways of working again is important. And then the next one is about approach to change. So this is about thinking about how you're going to approach the change to manage that transition from current to future business model. And what is disappointing for me, I've been doing this for quite a long time, is that lots of people um, think the statistics are still between 70 and 80 percent of business changes fail to deliver what was in the original business case. And there's a number of reasons for that. And one of the reasons for that is uh, is around people not sticking with it. So uh, the next bright and shiny thing comes along and they start they get distracted and they um, go and look at something else. So we have a diagnostic tool that we use called the other stuff. Um, and that stands for outcomes. Are you clear on what outcomes you want? Tenacity, you're going to stick with it through to the end. Human, understanding that there are humans involved and you need to think about how you um, bring them on the journey. Engagement, so how do we engage with everybody? And then reinforcement. And reinforcement is really important. You don't put up a road bridge and then think, oh, I wonder how I'm going to put the reinforcing steels into it. You put them in from the beginning. So we use that diagnostic tool to help companies uh, decide whether or not they, they're, they're, the way that they're approaching the change is going to deliver the outcomes that they want. So a couple of examples for that. We work with a firm of solicitors um, who were, in fact, we helped them with their vision and strategy, but then put together the plan for how they were going to roll that out, how they were going to implement that strategy. And fascinating for me, I haven't really thought about it, but actually solicitors get taught at university how to be good legal professionals. They don't actually get given any uh, business skills. So they sort of pick them up as they go along, but um, helping them work through, well, how do we implement something that's much more business related rather than legal related was really interesting. And then all, the, all of the change projects that we work on, it's about understanding the outcomes. So do you want a great training program or do you want people to be different when they're back in the workplace? And then putting a plan in place to methodically um, deliver that. That doesn't mean it has to be slow, but it does mean that we've got a plan. 
And then the last one of the five areas is people in focus. And again, this came up when we were talking about what challenges do we think we've got, because it's about well-being and mental health. And again, I think over the last 12 months, we've heard a lot more about that than we would have done um, in the previous few years. So, and it feels that it's been never been more important for us as a nation, let alone as a business. And we have a duty of care for employees and for our colleagues and also more engaged staff and more productive. So, you know, there's a number of reasons for doing that. So thinking about your communications, making certain that you um, consider how you communicate with everybody, particularly now we've got remote workers, <coughs> excuse me, communications should be two ways. So it's not just about you giving them lots of information. How do we make certain that we can have that two-way communication to improve the engagement? It might be about having individual coaching programs for people that are struggling either with their role or just with the pandemic generally. And then providing support to the management population. So we've run in the past uh, a few um, management courses, which is around helping the managers understand what's expected of them, giving them some coaching tools so you don't have to pay for an external coach, but so that they've got their, those uh, coaching skills so that they can actually coach and support the people that work for them. So those were the five areas that I wanted to talk through. I'm going to ask if there's any questions at the moment. That's the only thing in chat. So we're going to start a Zoom poll, actually. So thinking about those five areas, um, which one area would make the biggest difference to your business? So it is set as an, as an anonymous poll. Um, I'm, oops. Uh, stop using the mouse stop sharing and launch the poll yes yeah, so so oh, polling is closed relaunch polling there we go Continue. so hopefully you can all see the poll now I'll just give you a couple of minutes to think about that one. So we've had well, eight responses, so um, we're waiting for another six. There we go. Uh, so I shall end that and share the results. So again, hopefully you can all see that. So that's really, really interesting, isn't it? Because Clear on Direction has got um, a third of the votes um, and Approach to Change has got a third of the votes. Nothing around balanced skill set. So, and then a couple around the ways of working and a couple around people in focus. So um, would someone who perhaps thought clear and direction was important like to unmute themselves and share why for them that was an important one? I mean, you didn't know you had to participate. I think in the, the um current circumstances it is important to ensure that you're you are clear on the direction because it's very easy to try and cover too many bases and then each of them gets done very weakly so it's important to know that clear direction so that you can focus on that if it doesn't work after a certain amount of time maybe switch it but to know which one to go with right now is probably very key 
Yeah, I think absolutely, Chris. Thank you for that. So, um, yeah, and you knowing, and if you're, you know, if if we're small businesses, then it's important that you know and that you maybe share it with your customers. And if you're a larger business, even, you know, even six or eight people, it's amazing how communications in a small team can um, not be as effective as you'd think. Because you assume, don't you, if it's a small team, that we all talk together. But there's chatting and there's actually sharing information. So, um, yeah. Okay, what about approach to change? Who wants to be brave about approach to change? I'll have a say because we're all very quiet. Not that I know all the answers, that's for sure. I think the approach to change is really important because obviously we're in a totally different way of working at the moment. You know, there's the, the hybrid model, as they say, those people are working from home and those people who are working at the office and making sure there is no um, anger, animosity between the two and how you would approach all of that side of things. So you no, know, I think that's probably one of the key parts of how to run the business going forward, perhaps more so on some of the bigger organisations, but also very much on the SMEs. So how do we actually look at and work our way through this change, which is ongoing? Yes, yeah. And I think that's a really important point, Paul. I might have you know, talked about a lot of the companies we've worked with in the past have been larger organisations, but actually I think these things are just as, as, just as valid if you're a small organisation or a sole, you know, sole trader. You still need to think about how are we going to do these different things and how are we going to share that and make certain that we get things moving in the right direction. And I, I have a phrase that my team will have heard me say a few things. So it's when you hear people saying, well, hopefully we'll get to the other end. I don't like management by hope. What are you going to do to ensure that you get to the other end? So, you know, we're not hoping that we get there. We're going to make certain that we get there, which means we maybe need to do things differently. And the number of senior managers um, I've heard stand up in front of 100 people and saying, hopefully this is going to make a difference. No, they usually see me out the corner of their eye and they'll go, oh, Sally doesn't like it when I say hope. <laughs> which is very true. <laughs> But it is that, how are we really going to make that difference and how are we going to approach it and what are we going to put into place? So um, what about ways of working? What resonated for um, one of the two of you that put ways of working? I'll uh, dip in if I may. Uh, by the way, Sally, lovely to see you again. If you remember, last time we met was over a glass of wine at the cup. Oh, yes. Hi, Mike. <laughs> how are you doing? Right. Um, ways of working. The reason why I voted for that was... Ways of working for me actually underpins all the rest. If you don't embrace the change and you don't change the way of working, you cannot leverage the opportunities that that will bring for you. Yes. Uh, um, obviously, with uh, I've got a personal thing in terms of IT and leveraging that and making you making use of it. Uh, the big change, as you've already said, with MOD, um, no doubt they're using Zoom and Teams and most people now do, and it's become um, part and parcel of your daily working life. Whereas 12 months ago, no. Now it is endemic, if you want to call it that, uh, that we, we now have embraced that change and taken that opportunity. And so many things now are being solved and engaged because of the change of way of working. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I could, I could, don't think it's breaking any confidences, the MOD is really interesting because different departments of the MOD are, are embracing technology differently. <laughs> so uh, for some, uh, they'll use, there is a Zoom for defense. Some of them are using, um, are saying, no, we can't do any anything like that. It's not secure. So it's really interesting. So there is no common ways of working, mm. uh, which makes it really difficult for the businesses that are working with them. But that's a bit of an aside. And I think you're absolutely right. IT is an enabler. And it's making certain, isn't it, that IT as that enabler and helping you to work more effectively. But we also think about some of the behaviours that we want there. Oh. So, the biggest, uh, so, biggest challenge is um, people have been given Office 365, but with no training. Yes, exactly. And it's just like dump. Oh, we, yes. we must have Office 365. We must have Windows 10. Bang, it arrives. And everybody's just expected to swim from, yeah. that, from the uh, immediate. And I'm sorry, it is a different way of working Office 365. 
It is. And I think what's really interesting. So uh, one of the clients, he uh, one of the guys I was training, actually, in leadership, he was responsible for all the new technology and the engineering function. Uh, and we talked about outcomes because I said, actually, the outcome you want is people to be using the technology, not everyone it being sitting on everyone's computer. And he went, oh, I've never thought about it like that. <laughs> So he was just saying, I need to get everybody whatever that technology is, rather than really thinking about how we're going to use that technology. Exactly. So, um, so, so that changed his approach. And last but not least, um, who went for people in focus? I'm going to go probably Joy yeah, was I, one of them. Yes. Oh, so sorry. I, I, yeah, I um, put that down. Um, I think for me, I, I, I chose that one because I mean they're all relevant, but for people in focus, especially because for businesses that you know, they've had staff off on furlough for long periods of time over the last 12 months, it's key and critical that you get your people back really um, focused in terms of what you're trying to achieve as an organization. So they share your vision and, and objectives in order to really get you um, to where you want to to, to achieve and, and get to. So I think, um, you know, a lot of that comes down to um, clearing and constant communication, obviously training and all the other things that um, we've been actually doing as a business, even during lockdown to really get them ready for when we reopen. So I think it's an empowering them as well to feel they've got all the skill set and confidence to deliver what it is that you do as a business. Yeah, and I think that's brilliant, Sonny. And I think some people have used the opportunity, haven't they? And they have kept engaging with everybody, even though they're on furlough. And some organisations haven't. And you know, and you'll reap the benefits from doing what you've been doing. I think. So, um, well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing. I've got two more slides. I think I've got myself in a bit of a pickle now on my slides, so I'll just go and reshare the screen. Not that one, all that one, all that one, all that one. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep talking, but if you've got any feedback on this session, be brilliant uh, if you popped it into chat. And if you've got any questions, you know, happy to answer any questions you've got about things that you're maybe thinking, well, I don't quite know how I would do that, or any questions you've got on what we've talked about. But yeah, be really interested to get your feedback um, on, on this session in the chat area. Um, my contact details, so if any of you do want to um, either link in with me, um, I don't know how many Sally Palethorpes there are. So um, it's, a, it's a strange old surname. I have been married for 34 years, but anyway, people still manage to call me Palatorpe, which was very exotic. So, uh, but Sally Palethorpes there um, and my email address. And then the thing that Brian talked about right at the beginning is uh, for the first time, we're running an open leadership development program. Uh, it's going to be over six months. We're going to start it in May, which sort of fits OK with, I think, with what Boris is talking about. Um, would be a day, uh, five one day modules and then also a one to one coaching session. And it's about giving people um, those leadership skills that maybe we haven't got we haven't been trained in before and I think the beauty of this particular one is if we've got people from different organizations then we can also share the experiences that people have had from those different organizations and it's all about rewarding those individuals who we put into a leadership position so by developing their leadership capabilities there's a few um, testimonials there the one I like the most is the course really helped me and therefore helped my team so a uh, manufacturing team leader who I think wasn't the best team leader before he went through the course. And there's, again, some companies we've worked with to deliver training. So the cost is £750 per person, but we're offering a 20% discount for uh, Bishop VZ in the network and also for the Birmingham Chamber. So that makes it £600, which I think is quite a, an affordable uh, course these days so anyway if you're interested or know anyone that you think might be interested please do get in touch with me and we'll send this out with the um, information that we send out from the course uh, from today's session so and I'm gonna stop sharing sorry just reading the chat yeah I agree Mike um so any other thoughts before I hand over to Brian 
Yeah, I just wanted to, to ask, interesting, you know, on the back of the announcement on, on Monday and just get a feel from perhaps some of the business owners in the room on this is, is how how much the, you know, the, the 21st of June date sort of resonates with business owners. And of course, some that's more important to others, depending what, you know, what uh, what industry you're in. But, you know, we, we've gone online, we've done online, you know, stuff for so long. How much of a change do you think that will have on businesses' behaviour? you know, into September, October, November, later in the year? I know it's a, a broad question, but it's interesting to get people's thoughts. Or your salad. <laughs> I, I just say for the customers I've been speaking to, obviously I've had a lot of time for them to get to, to round their head around it. The, the big ones I've had is, is furlough going to continue until we get through a lot of this and we start getting back to some semblance of normal. Sorry, Sally, I've got to get to you said in terms of what normal is and, and how we've progressed from there. But yeah, furlough and also the timelines. That's the other one which I think people have. So very optimistic, but also very cautious as well, I guess, is the feedback I've received. Yeah, and, and I think uh, for some of the larger companies, they're still being very cautious about what they're saying. You know, they're doing their own internal um, risk assessment about what they can and can't do. So I, I think it'll take a little while till people are confident enough moving forward. I think that's the key thing, Sally, is, you know, it ultimately has to come down to each organisation risk assessing what's best for them. And, you know, there's lots of different aspects that are involved in this. You know, Paul and I have talked about this. Mike and I have talked about this, even discussed it with Brian a little bit. But, you know, there's, forgive me for saying it, but there's the whole... I'm working next to somebody who's not been vaccinated and I have, how's that going to make somebody feel? And you can't, you can't discriminate against anybody in that situation. And as an employer, everyone has that responsibility to safeguard the safety of everybody that's in their building. So it, you're right, it comes down to the risk assessment and making sure that you've got a strong consultation in place between now and then, because that's one of the duties anyway real strong consultation with the entire workforce to see how they feel about it and then putting in those control measures that are right for your business based on the feedback from your people you know and and and, and that's i think really the, the the key aspect is it might not be long enough uh, away it may be that the, 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 there's going to be a lot of hybrid working, I think, and, and that, that some of those people that are working at home may not come back for a very long time, may not be June when they come back, it may be further into the, into the future. I've been, sorry, I've been talking to some of the, uh, some of our alumni at sort of uh, you know, big, big firms in Birmingham, London, and their companies are already saying you won't be back in the building until... January 2022 at the earliest so you know it's it, I, I can't do that we're going to stick to to it and that it is going to all open up and be as it was on what is it June the 21st it's just as much as I'd love it to be I mean we've got a golf day plan for the end of that week um, you know um is that the right time? Is it the right time now to be pushing out a golf day for the end of that week? It's a people. Are we going to get a hundred people sign up with confidence to do that? As much, you know, I'm an optimist. A lot of you know me, but that is a that is that is very very optimistic, isn't it? So um, I think we might have to put that back a, a few weeks and, and see how things evolve. Really, but yeah, sorry, Sarah. No, I was just going to say, I think for lots of companies, they're saying actually they'll never go back to working full time in the office. So they will always have one or two days when they can do home working because they found that it works for them. It works for the company. You know, they get quite a lot of work done. So I, I think there's going to be lots of organisations who will always um, be fundamentally changed by this. So um, I, think, I think, you know, that, there's going to be some people that obviously prefer that and some that don't isn't it i know talking to phil who's got quite a few employees um and his younger staff who perhaps are working in their bedrooms at home want to be in the office you know his older staff who right, might be able to drop their kids off at school or you know have a bit more flexibility 
probably prefer the working from home. I'm not saying it's just down to age, but it, it's certainly a factor, I think, and um, yeah, perhaps something for, for, for people to consider, but... Um, it's age and personality type, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there are some people who... Are, there's one woman, and we did the whole training online this year, and she loved it. She said it was brilliant. I didn't have to interact with anyone. Found the training really good, didn't have to interact with anyone, except for like this. So... Um, it, I think the thing about from my over the last year and, and perhaps with some of the fundraising I've been doing for school is with Zoom you, or Teams, you get to the point quicker. So, you know, some of the contracted sort of negotiations and discussions that might have taken weeks or months or you waited until that person could come to see you or you could get to them, actually, you just... He's just going to say it a bit quicker now, you know, and that has a positive, I think. Um, there's, there's probably a negative in terms of, you know, if you're asking the questions at the right times without having built up those relationships sometimes. But, you know, people are getting to the point quicker for, for important conversations and, you know... Um, and, and more comfortable, I guess. Now we're all more comfortable with this, aren't we? Whereas a year yeah. ago, you know, very few of us would have been doing it this way. But now it's, you know, we've probably most of us done multiple uh, sessions like this. So it, it, somewhere in between. But that's 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 your role, Sally, and you know, for for people like you and the rest of the Inspired Partners team to uh, to to educate us and to and to, to help us so um no thank you brilliant session i think it's great timing as well and that's you know when we were planning it um we weren't sure when boris's most recent announcement would be but you know a couple of days after that and you know with some light at the tunnel um thank you for an enlightening and inspiring session and i hope you've all got something that you can take away and reflect on your own practices Obviously, um, you know, if there are any members of your team that you feel would benefit uh, from the offer, um, we'll, we'll send that out to you guys and it will be all over sort of social media in the next day or two as well. Um, but yeah, big round of applause. We, we did this on the last one we did. So let's big virtual clap. <laughs> it do work. I was, I was nervous the first time we did one of those, but... I've got big hands, so they make a lot of noise. Um, and thank you all for attending. Um, good to have a real night today. Um, always nice that, you know, we've got a blend of sort of Bishop Veasy corporate partners, some chamber members and some some of our alumni as well as, as, well as a number of the Inspire Partners team. So, um, so yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Sally. Thank you, Chris, for, for sort of um, organising the Zoom details and um there'll be another bishop vz event in the next month or so so uh, look out for further information regarding that okay okay thank you very much everybody thanks everyone bye is